As you know, RC aircrafts are radio controlled aircrafts and they're governed by radio waves. This is a brief block of instruction on what electromagnetism is, what an antenna is, how to better use antennas, and common interference you may have. Understanding radio waves and how antennas work could possibly help you in this hobby. The electromagnetic force is one of the four forces that actually govern our universe. It is comprised of the electrical field and the magnetic field which transport energy. The electromagnetism is responsible for light, thermal conditions, hot or cold, ionizing radiation, and most importantly radio waves which is the focus of this lecture. Radio waves are a very small portion of this actual force and it does govern quite a bit of things. Electricity and magnetism were once thought of as two different forces. After many years of research, we've come to realize that they are one and the same force. Electromagnetism is a conjunction of electricity and magnetism, and that is why we refer to it as electromagnetism. The electromagnetic field is the vessel that transmits energy throughout the universe. It is comprised of singular electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are made of photons, the force carrier particle of electromagnetism. The photon is an amazing particle that can carry both electrical and magnetic charge through space. They are the fastest thing in the physical universe, making radio waves the fastest thing in existence. As the photon moves through space and time, it carries both an electrical field and a magnetic field that are exactly 90 degrees apart at all times. Illustrated below is the electrical field is the red and the magnetic field is the blue. As you can see as the photon travels it oscillates and the frequency at which it oscillates decides on which type of wave it's going to be. These different oscillation patterns have actually been categorized in what we like to call the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a wonderful chart I found on the internet pertaining to the electromagnetic spectrum. As I said before, the frequency at which a photon oscillates decides what sort of wave it's going to be. On the very right side, you have the ionizing radiation, and those are very small oscillations, very fast. And on the left side, you have the very slow oscillation, and those are generally the radio waves. Radio waves exist between 3 kilohertz, 3,000, and 300 gigahertz, 300 billion oscillations per second. Radio waves are non-ionizing, as you can see by the chart. They are not dangerous to your health unless they are very focused, and then they can actually cause flu-like symptoms. But generally speaking, RF radiation, you're being pelted with it all the time. It is not dangerous. I just went over very briefly what the electromagnetic force is and how it actually pertains to radio waves. Of course, given the amount of time I want to make this video and the amount of information there is actually on this subject, I did leave quite a bit of information out. You can do solo research on that or you can ask me. I'd be more than willing to help you. The next subject I'm going to cover is antennas. What is an antenna? It is an object that can transmit or receive information. In the context of this lecture, electromagnetic waves. Antennas like you're used to seeing, like on the left, the parabolic reflector. It is a giant satellite dish that can receive or transmit RF radiation. Or on the right side, a more unorthodox antenna called the human eye. It receives electromagnetic radiation in the same fashion the parabolic reflector does, but it receives a higher frequency of the same radiation called visible light. The term antenna is very broad. The sun or the lights in your house can be referred to as antennas because they do transmit or receive electromagnetic radiation. These are some common antennas that usually come across. The Yagi is usually on top of buildings. It's very directional and very good for video. The Patch is a very good radio directional antenna. And the Whip is very common on vehicles, handheld radios. Shortwave communications is generally the application of that one. There are two major types of antennas. The black will represent the antenna, and the red is going to represent the electromagnetic field. The omnidirectional on the left has the antenna in the middle. And the field radiates in all directions. Whip antennas are generally omnidirectional. Omnidirectional antennas have advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is it doesn't really matter which way you're facing because it transmits in all directions. The disadvantage is, is you don't really have a focused field, so your path loss is going to be quite extreme. You're not going to get very good range with these antennas. 
On the right side I have a directional antenna. These are very high gain. They're, they focus their electromagnetic field very specifically. The advantage of these things is you get a lot more range and concentrated field. The disadvantage, if you're not in front of them, you're probably not going to get a very good signal. So these are better for stationary units, uh, buildings, and ground stations. As I mentioned on the previous slide, I said the word gain, and that is called DBI. That stands for decibels relative to isotropic radiation. Gain is the efficiency at which an antenna can utilize both the electrical and magnetic fields. Directional antennas are very efficient. They have high gain. They have a very small focused field. Whereas omnidirectional antennas have low gain. They're less efficient. Their electromagnetic radiation spews out in all directions at once. The next thing I'm going to cover is the antenna RF polarity. The red is going to represent the electrical field and the blue is going to represent the magnetic field. On the left is vertically polarized, which means the electrical wave is vertical and the magnetic wave is horizontal. In the middle is horizontally polarized. The electrical field is now horizontal and the magnetic field is vertical. On the right is a tricky one, it's circularly polarized antennas. They have an electrical field and magnetic field, both horizontally and vertically, simultaneously. It is very important to have unison polarity with your antennas. The transmitting and receiving antenna must have the same polarization, or the receiving antenna might not be able to catch the signal properly because the waves are not oriented correctly. Simply put, if your transmitting antenna is sideways, your receiving antenna must be sideways as well. Circular polarized antennas are the easiest. As long as both transmit and receive antennas are that, then you probably will catch signal. If you're running two frequencies simultaneously, two ups and two downs, mount one vertically and one horizontally. That will minimize interference and allow both signals to travel freely. When building an antenna, you're going to want to know the wavelength. By knowing the size of the wavelength, you will know the size of your antenna you will need to catch it. If you look at the top graph, the entire thing is one second. The moment that the wave touches the black line makes one full oscillation and touches again. That is one wavelength. The formula for finding out wavelength is lambda equals C divided by T. Lambda is the wavelength, C is the speed of light, and T is the frequency in megahertz. For instance, for the 870 kilohertz AM band, I would take the speed of light and I would divide that by 870,000 because kilohertz is oscillations per second. That would give me 344 meters. That is a large band. If your frequency is in megahertz, you're going to be 1 million. So if I'm trying to figure out the wavelength for 60 megahertz, I would take the speed of light and I would divide that by 60 million. And for gigahertz, if I'm trying to figure out what the satellite uh, frequency 3 gigahertz is, I would divide the speed of light by 3 billion. If you were to play with this equation several times and plug in several different frequencies all over the band, you would actually get a good representation on how big these things are. If you're talking about the 3 kilohertz band that's all the way at the bottom of the spectrum, that thing is kilometers high. But if you get to the other end, those are smaller than atoms. The electromagnetic spectrum is very vast in its size. Of course, most radio equations are going to be in the metric system and not in the American system as we know, miles, feet, yards, and whatnot, because radio theory was developed in Europe. So that's why we're using meters. You can convert. There is 3.3 feet in every meter. So all you have to do is figure out what the meters of your band is, and then just divide that by 3.3, and that gives you feet. Next, I'm going to explain the antenna wavelength relationship on my beautiful Microsoft Paint diagram. Sometimes on the lower frequencies, the AM bands, the waves are quite huge. Like on the 870 band, it's 1,157 feet tall. That's a full wavelength. And that's just impractical to build a full wavelength antenna. So what we'll do is, is we can do a quarter wavelength. And we're only using a quarter of the actual wavelength itself, which would be 282 feet. Even though my antenna is only a quarter the size of the actual wave, I'm still transmitting and receiving full wavelengths. The smaller antenna is just more practical. We can't make 1,000 foot antennas or we can't carry around 1,000 foot antennas. So we use these increments to have more compact mobile antennas. So if you ever hear anyone say full, half, or quarter wavelength antenna, this is what they're talking about. Most radio waves are ground waves and they follow the curvature of the Earth. So on the left side you have an antenna, on the right side you have an antenna. The wave actually follows the curvature of the Earth. 
this is what line of sight communication is because both antennas can see each other they can both transmit to each other freely if you can't see each other through line of sight you can use a thing called sky waves ionospheric and that's bouncing off the ionosphere this is between 30 and 50 megahertz as long as they're both at the proper orientation and angle you can actually bounce off our atmosphere and transmit extreme long distance even across the earth the last thing I'm going to cover is the common interference you can have with radio communications Signal horizon is the biggest problem with line of sight communication. I'm trying to transmit from the right to the left. As you can see, the mountain in the center is blocking my path. The easiest way around this is actually just to move your antennas laterally, or you can just make them taller so they can see over the obstructions. Path loss is the degradation of the signal over time and space. So the antenna's in the center with the signal radiating out from it. The farther you are away from an antenna, the less signal you're going to get because of all the impedance in the atmosphere, it's going to hinder your signal quite thoroughly. Another big thing that can really affect your um, antenna communication ability is grounding. Make sure that your antenna has a good connection to the ground. Generally, radio stations are near bodies of water so they can get a nice water table underneath of them. The connection to the ground of your antenna is very important and can affect your communication drastically. I did warn you that my little paintings are terrible, but atmospheric conditions can uh, affect you quite thoroughly. Humidity is your biggest concern. Water traveling through the air can absorb radio signals. So anytime it's raining, you're probably going to have a little bit less uh, communication ability. Multipathing is a really big problem we have. The black is the antenna and the red is the signal. If the signal leaves the right side heading to the left at the same time, A is a shorter route and B is the longer route. So B is going to arrive just after A and that's going to cause some static interference with the transmission, usually an overlap. And in urban environments, this is a really big issue that people have and most people just don't realize it's happening. The last thing I'm going to cover is polarity shift. Polarity shift is a kind of a issue with long distance communication. When your signal passes through clouds or absorbent objects, it can actually cause the polarity of your signal to shift. So if you transmit vertically and receive vertically, well, it might be altered just slightly in you know, degrees. So if you circularly polarize, you generally won't run into this problem. Really appreciate you watching this video. If you have any questions over the things I've covered in the last 15 minutes, please feel free to contact me. I will be more than happy to help you out. Have a good day.